We have all fallen in love with an item and we would love to frame it, but we can't find a frame to fit it or it doesn't really need the glass. So what do we do? We're going to build it ourselves. I have these really cool polychrome stereo viewer things that I found and they are very weathered and old, but I love them. They just have so much life to them and the quality of them. Some of them are, they've seen better days, but some are really great and they have this wonderful like coloring to them that just cannot be duplicated. So I thought these would be great to put in any kind of little frame. Well, to find the frame is almost impossible. So I said, no worries. I don't need glass on it anyway. I'm just going to build my own. So join me on the adventure of building tiny little frames for these sweet polychrome viewers. The very first step, and I'm not going to do this right now because I have a tenant upstairs and it's eight o'clock in the morning and I just don't think it would be fair to make this kind of noise for him because it is a router table is so loud. So the very first thing is I'm going to actually just router out a nice little track that I can put inside my back support that I'm going to use for the frame. And then right on top of that is going to be where my little, you know, cute little scene is going to go. The polychrome scene. My exterior angles need to go from start to finish for seven and a half. So I'm just going to mark from outside to outside angle because I'm going to be doing 45 degree angles and then coming inward. But those top, the very top of my angles coming in is going to measure seven and a half. And I'm going to cut that with my circular saw. I'm going to cut that twice because I need a top and a bottom. Two matching pieces. Next, we're going to work on the actual side. So for that, I need four and a quarter. And keep in mind, when I am having to flop and keep changing my circular saw to the different 45 degree angles, it's because I did the router through one side. So I can only use that side to get my angles. Or if that router part wasn't in the middle, I could be just flipping the piece of wood over and not having to waste like that tiny half an inch. It is what it is. But now to do my sides. The next step is to measure out the backing for this polychrome viewer. And so this is where I love using my scrap pieces. I love having zero waste. It stretches the dollar. When you have a small business, every penny counts. So this is huge. And you are going to be super satisfied when you're building your own frames too, when you have that perfect scrap to use in a situation just like this. So this measurement is going to be easy, no tape measure. I'm just going to trace this polychrome viewer and then do the cut. This next part is so much fun because now you get to put all your pieces together and see if your measurements were correct. Mine were. So now I'm gonna stain it and I think I'm gonna go with a darker stain to just be able to pull out all of the colors in this picture. I skipped the part where I stained because I feel like everyone knows how to stain and the directions are right on the back of the can, but I will say I love Minwax. As you can see, I have used this particular can up a ton. I'm kind of, it's provincial and I'm kind of in a provincial phase. It's not too dark, it's not too light, it's so perfectly nestled in between the two. So that is what I'm really using these days. Love Minwax, cannot say enough about them. I decided to glue the Poly View image right onto my wood backing. I just found that that was going to be probably a lot easier for me to have to like navigate with my pieces. So I'm gonna put my pieces of the puzzle together on my frame, and this is gonna be so cute! So what is the moral of this? If you find something you love and you want to do something with it, but you can't find what you need, make it. Make it. All right, this guy. All right. And he is looking like this. Is that not sweet? Oh, my gosh. I almost want to take this one home. If you don't make any money this way. Because we're dealing with 45 degree angles, I find using masking tape to kind of keep all of my pieces in place is super helpful. When I'm using my brad nailer, it can be a very tricky to keep all of these pieces into place. So I just find that the masking tape helps tremendously. I forgot to say what size brad nails I'm actually using. Because this is such a very small trim, I'm simply using 5'8", which is a very itty bitty nail, but that should absolutely 100% do the trick. And remember, if you're using this, always keep it locked until you're ready to use it.
All right, I am all nailed up, so I'm going to take my masking tape off and reveal my cute little framed out piece. Gosh darn, that is a cute one. So what do we learn from this? That if you find something that you love and it isn't in a frame, you very easily can put it into a frame yourself, oftentimes just using your scraps. And if you need to put glass in it, no worries. I have a video already that I did on cutting glass. So if you have a piece of glass laying around that you need to make this specific size, I have all of the things in that video for you. And then if you wanted to put this with glass, you simply route that hole, just double the width, so that way there is room for the glass to go in there as well. So please do not pass up a special find that you see, that you love, that you go, oh, I need to frame it up. Frame it! It's super easy.